Now, SAT grammar. You might be thinking, all I need to learn are a couple of rules and then I'll be fine for the whole test. And while that might be true with memorized rules, that's not always the case with practice rules. Now, practice rules involve more effort to fully learn. And the reason that is, is because with practice rules, you need to fully understand the concept and then you need to practice actually using the concept because that itself is another skill that you need to learn. And that's why you won't just be able to get a perfect score just learning specific rules. You need to learn how to actually apply them. But once you do learn how to actually apply all of them and get get it into your intuition instead of just something that you know, then you instantly add to your score because your accuracy just goes up once you fully click and you get them. Hi, my name is Karthik and these are SAT grammar topics that will be on your SAT and this is part one. So relevance and purpose right? These types of questions normally involve like, what is the most relevant detail? Or they'll have like a little highlighted part and they'll be like, the author is considering to add this, should they, why or why not? And you have to give like, there'll be specific answer choices with specific reasoning. And not only do you have to pick the correct answer, but you have to pick the correct answer and the correct reason, right? And the reason why I'm going through this first is this is one of the most significant things that are on the SAT grammar portion. It makes up about five to 10 questions on every single SAT. The amount, like if you were to just study one thing, right, and get good at the SAT, this would be it because it's five to 10 questions, right? This is such a significant portion for grammar. It's almost like it can be up to 25% of like the whole grammar portion. So if there's one skill that you really need to know, it should be relevance and purpose questions, right? You need to figure out what exactly is the passage about right? Does this specific detail follow with the passage and have a meaning, right? And can I I properly identify what that meaning is? Now, how do we start tackling these problems? What do I have to do to get them correct? Now, the easiest way to do it is by starting with the yes and the no. And what I mean by that is normally in these questions, you'll have answer choices and there'll be like two yeses and two nos, right? Is this thing relevant yes or no, right? And that basically narrows down two answer choices. You need to target that part first, right? And the reason is, is you need to figure out that part because you don't want to get distracted by the reasoning that the answer choices give you, right? So you're going to read that phrase and you're going to see if it's relevant to the passage. And if you read all the answer choices before you figure out what part is actually relevant, you're going to see that the reasoning that they offer right in every single answer choice for yes or no might actually convince you of what is correct and what is not correct. But if you just take the phrase alone and read the passage, you can almost quickly identify the yes or no yourself without even looking at their specific reasoning, figure out your own reasoning right? So how do we exactly identify the yes or no, just because we know for reasoning, right? So if you're unable to fully figure out why it's yes or no, right? The key is that you need to look for irrelevance, right? And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. But basically, you need to work with keywords, right, that aren't in the other parts of the paragraph, right? If there's no specific relationship, you know, there might be a new keyword, but that keyword has a relationship to the previous or the sentence that comes after. But if there's no relation, that might be an issue, right? If it disrupts your flow of thought, right, the passages goes one way, and then there's just like something that's like completely off. And then the passage continues the same way that it was going. That's a disruption of your flow of thought. And that might also be something that's irrelevant, right? So I'm going to read this example that I just made up. When I went to the coffee shop on Sunday, I went to the coffee shop on Sunday. As soon as I arrived, I walked up to the line and impatiently waited to have my order taken. Afterwards, I went home alone. I had forgotten how annoying waiting in line can be. Now, this is like maybe a little bit of a complicated example, but if you look at afterwards, I went home alone, right? That part, even though it's like a decently good detail to like might have there and the forgotten how annoying waiting in line can be might have been something that like could have been thought about afterwards in the author. But if you were to read this as like continuous flow, afterwards, I went home alone, right? That is like a phrase that shows like discontinuance in the entire paragraph, right? It's somewhat irrelevant in the whole thing, right? The series is they went to the shop, they waited in line. And while they were waiting in line, they forgot how annoying waiting in line could be, right? 
And that's not something, a thought that you necessarily have after you go home. So the home itself is a keyword that's not really in this whole passage. There's no specific relationship that going home has to like anything else. And you might say that it sets up the next sentence, but it's like completely irrelevant to the fact and it's not necessary to set up the next sentence as the second sentence could also set up the final one. So afterwards, I went home alone is a way of irrelevance right? So when you're looking for yes or no, you need to find out, is that phrase irrelevant or not? Now, identify the reasoning, right? If your reasoning does not match up with the reasoning that's given in your answer choice, so let's say you picked yes, and then the reasoning is like completely off, that's a sign that you need to reconsider the yes slash no, right? Because if your reasoning doesn't match up with the reasoning given or your reasoning isn't like similar to the reasoning given, you need to completely reconsider that because you might've gotten it wrong, right? So to really figure out what the reasoning is, like first we need to like relook at our phrase, right? We've already determined that the phrase is, the phrase is either like good or it's bad, right? It belongs there or it doesn't. But what's the phrase's purpose or lack of purpose, right? Does it explain something? Is it a transition phrase? Is it, does it describe something that happens before or after? Does it set up a series of events in a timeline, right? You need to clearly identify the purpose, right? And make sure that the question includes that specific purpose, right? If you came up with the purpose of, oh, it's explanation, you need to make sure that explanation is actually the correct purpose right? That it's, that's the one it's no. And because it's like not an explanation or something, right? You need to figure out the exact purpose or what that thing specifically does not have. And once you identify the reasoning before you look at the answer choices and you find that the one that you have in your head is correct with the one to answer, you'll get really good at figuring out what the right answer for these types of questions are. Now, here are some tips, right? Read the surrounding sentences to determine what the function is, right? If you're still confused about what function it has, read a little bit before and read a little bit after. Maybe it might even be in a paragraph before, depending on what it's, what the sentence is really talking about. But you need to read the surrounding sentence if you really want to figure out what the underlying portion, like function is, right? If you don't read around the func like around the underlying sentence, you're never going to find out the function, right? Because the function has specifically to do with everything around it, right? A sentence can stand alone if it's grammatically correct, but it's about the function of that sentence, right? And as you just do more of these, you're going to get better at it, right? This skill slowly becomes intuition as you do it more and more. So as an actionable step from this video, in your next prep session, I want you to commit to practicing this skill, right? If you want to actually get better at this type of question, which is a significant portion of the grammar SAT, so this is almost the biggest bang for your buck if you're going to practice any one question, practice this skill so you can guarantee a good amount of correct answers, you know, like get good and make this skill less of like a learning and like a, like a concept and more of like intuition, like you almost know that this is the correct answer. Now I'm giving out SAT prep, but I only have three more spots for my huge discount. So let me know if that's something you're interested in by filling out the link in description. And thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something.